Hi, Lance here from Fly Fish Food. I want to real quickly show you how to rig a fly reel. Uh, we're going to go through the knots real quick, but you can look through some of the links that Curtis will put in here to learn the knots in greater detail. But I want to show you at least or get you a real quick primer on what you need to do to get your own reel rigged. If you live no nearby our shop, we're happy to do it for you. If you don't live near a shop that can load it, you might find this useful. So first I'm going to take this reel and stick it in the line winder. This is Curtis's reel, so I guess it doesn't matter if I screw this one up. Then I'm going to take some backing. Every fly line, or every fly reel, I, sh I should say, gets backing. Um, I'm going to wrap it around the reel at least twice. You can do it even up to three times. And then I'm going to tie an arbor knot, which is basically a, a slip knot around the main line. So we're going to tie the arbor, put a stopper knot in place here, cinch it up. Then, if I can figure out where Cheech put the nippers, there they are, blasted Cheech, cut off the tag end. Then this is, like I said, this is a slip knot, so this will slip, slide right down to the spool, and now I'm ready to reel the backing onto the spool. So one thing to consider here, whether you're doing yours at home or on the line winder, is direction of retrieve. Uh, there's no right or wrong here. You can cast with the right and reel with the left. You can cast with the right, switch hands and reel with the right. It doesn't matter how you do it. You just want to make sure you wind the line on the right direction and also have the drag of the reel uh, set to the right direction. So this one is for Curtis. So we're going to do it cast right, reel left. And we want to keep some tension on the backing so that it doesn't bite into itself. We want to get it wrapped on there nice and level. So I'm guiding it with my fingers and keeping some tension on the spool. We'll get the backing on here. And then next up is going to be our fly line. This is a really large arbor reel, so it takes up backing pretty quick. So we'll cut that loose. Now the line that, that uh, Curtis has chosen is the new Scientific Angler's Amplitude, which is a super, super slick line. It happens to have a welded loop on the back end of it. So we're going to add a loop in the back of this, uh, on the end of this backing, I should say. If the, the line that you have doesn't have a loop on it, then you'd want to do a nail knot or an Albright in this okay, er, in, in, in place of this loop. So the surgeon's loop, again, you can see on various websites but I'm basically going to just make a very large loop that's big enough to go over the spool of backing. So I'm going to go through four times. I'm through twice so far. Three, four times through. I lost my last one. There we go. Then I'm going to cinch it up. I like to grab a pair of forceps and really pull on the tag end of the, the knot to make sure that it cinches up as much as possible and then I'm going to trim the tag end away. Now I left this loop large on purpose because it needs to get over the top of this spool. So next up we're going to get rid of the twist ties on the line, find the end of the line that's marked attach this end to reel. This line like I say has a loop which makes this really easy. We slide the backing loop through the fly line and then over the top of the fly line spool bring them together, make sure they seat properly, and line them up. Again, keeping some tension, taking a little bit of care to try and wrap the line on the spool as even as possible. It's not going to be perfect, but we just don't want it all piling up on one side or the other. And then, once we get the line on there, the next step would be to add a leader. In this case, this line again has a welded loop, so a loop-to-loop -loop connection is really easy. If the line you have doesn't have the loop, you could do a needle nail knot, a regular nail knot, an Albright, or a super glue splice. And then from there, you're ready to add your leader and fish. So a couple other things to think about is the amount of backing. You can check the manufacturer of the reel that you own and see what their recommended amount of backing is. The other trick is to just take the line off the spool and place it on there. It's, it's not quite the same diameter as, as your spool, but if you just place it while it's still in the twist ties and stick it on the reel on top of the backing, it'll take about that same amount of room as it does uh, on this spool itself. So anyhow, that's one other trick. The other thing to consider is if you don't have a line winder doing this at home, it's best to have somebody with a pencil or something through the, the backing spool and or the line spool because you want it to unwind off of this the same direction it's being wound on your spool. You don't want it twisting off sideways like this. You'd want it coming off like that. 
coming off sideways off either the backing or the fly line spool like this will twist it. Since this is Curtis's, we don't care if it's twisted. <laughs>